Welcome, my beloved general chemistry students, to chapter three. Before we get started today, I need to tell you something. Chemists, as it turns out, do a lot of things. We invent medicines, food flavorings, preservatives and dyes, materials used in modern electronics, cars, airplane parts, tank armor, bulletproof vests, disposable diapers, packaging, paints, insecticides, and everything else imaginable. Basically, everything that you can touch with your hands that didn't come directly from nature contains something in it that was invented or developed by a chemist. Now to gain the ability to actually use chemical reactions to do stuff, you have to first learn some very basic but essential things. This chapter begins by covering some of them. I promise that even though they may feel at times like activities that are completely pointless, you will eventually see that they are absolutely essential. I like to liken this metaphorically to the following clip taken from the classic 1980s movie, The Karate Kid. Now, for any of you who've seen this movie, you have to understand that Daniel, the kid, has come to this well-respected karate instructor, Mr. Miyagi, so that Mr. Miyagi will teach Daniel karate. Mr. Miyagi goes on to ask Daniel to wax all of his cars, to paint his fence, and to sweep his floors. Daniel, at the time, thinks that Mr. Miyagi is basically just making Daniel do all of his housework. Daniel starts to get pretty upset in this clip, but finally realizes that by having him do all of those tasks, Mr. Miyagi was actually teaching him karate. You learned plenty. I learned plenty. I learned how to sand your decks, maybe. I've watched your car, paint your house, paint your fence. I learned plenty, right? Uh, not everything is as seen. Oh, and I'm going home, man. Daniel-san. Daniel-san. What? Come here. Show me paint the fence. Up, down. Up, down. Up, down. Other side. Look, I. Always look, I. Show me paint the house. Side, side. Lock wrist. Side, side. Side, side. Yes. Show me wax on, wax off. Get! 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 Show me paint the fence. Get! Face! Get! Get! Show me side to side. Get! 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 Show me sand the floor. Get! Face! 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 Similarly, as we move forward in chemistry, there are going to be lots of tasks that are going to seem pointless and not really connected to each other for a while, like sweeping the floor and waxing the car and painting my fence. <laughs> I promise you, however, that if you will just grit your teeth and learn them, that eventually they will come together and you will see how they are actually applied and useful later on, not only in chemistry, but in many of your other science classes and hopefully your careers as well. After this lecture, you guys should be able to do each of the many following tasks. One, explain the difference between combination, decomposition, and combustion reactions. Two, balance chemical equations. Three, calculate formula weights, which are also called molar masses, and percent compositions. Four, use Avogadro's number to interconvert between moles and number of atoms. Five, use a compound's molecular weight to interconvert between moles and grams. And six, calculate the number of molecules and atoms in a sample from its mass. This brings us to something that I really have to teach you and you really have to understand, the idea of chemical equations. A chemical equation is essentially a chemist's way of writing a sentence in which we describe a certain chemical process. What we do in the sentence is we write on the left side a number of different chemicals. It can be one or more. And on the right side, we do the same. We then join the two by putting an arrow between them. The stuff on the left side of the equation is called reactants. The stuff on the right side of the equation is called products. 
In this particular example reaction, we can see that two individual molecules of hydrogen gas, which is H2, can combine with a single molecule of oxygen gas, which has a formula of O2, to make two individual molecules of water, H2O. If you actually count the number of atoms in this chemical equation, you can see that there are four atoms of hydrogen on both the left and the right of the chemical equation, and there are also two atoms of oxygen on both the left and the right. So as I mentioned already, the participants in this chemical reaction that are on the left side of the equation are called reactants, and the things that they make, which are shown on the right side of the equation, are products. This arrow that joins the left side to the right side is often read by chemists as saying goes to, yields, or produces. Thus, if you were actually reading this, just like you would read a sentence on a page, you would say two molecules of H2 and one molecule of O2 yield two molecules of H2O. Now, rather than draw out two individual molecules of H2 as we have done here, the way a chemist will do it to try and be more concise is this. Chemist will write the number 2 in front of the H2. This indicates that there are two individual H2 molecules. And then write plus O2. This arrow here, which once again means goes to, yields, or produces, is drawn. And then there are two individual molecules of H2O. So this number 2 is written in front of them. If there are any special conditions that the particular chemical equation that we're talking about requires, they will also be written over the arrow or sometimes under the arrow. Those special conditions often include things like light or heat or the addition of a catalyst or something else of that type. The numbers shown here, 2 in front of the H2s and 2 in front of the H2Os are called coefficients. One more thing I need to specify is this. You'll notice that to the right of each of the reactants and products, we have these little italicized letters. The letters G here to the side of the H2 and the O2, and the letter L to the side of the H2O. What in the world do those mean? Well, those letters, quite simply, tell us what the physical state is of each of these individual substances. The letter G is an abbreviation for gas. The letter S is an abbreviation for solid, and L is for liquid. The letters AQ are an abbreviation for aqueous, which means dissolved in water. So what this means is that the conditions used for this particular reaction involve reacting two molecules of gaseous H2, that is H2 gas, with one molecule of O2 gas to yield or produce two molecules of H2O liquid. We can see that this particular chemical reaction can actually be run in reverse. In other words, if you start out with liquid water, you can produce hydrogen and oxygen gases. However, to go in this direction requires a special condition, that of an electric current. This chemical equation down here is a completely separate reaction in which two molecules of KClO3 solid react to form two molecules of KCl solid and three molecules of O2 gas. You'll notice that there's a little triangle above this arrow, which means that this particular reaction requires heat. So the triangle symbol represents the need for heat. I now wish to teach you three different kinds of chemical reactions. The first type is called a combination reaction. In a combination reaction, two or more elements or compounds combine to form one or more products. Here's an example. You'll notice on the left side of the equation, there are two different substances. And on the right hand of the equation, there's only one. This is a combination reaction because what's happening is the two different reactants are combining to form one product. Here's another example. You'll notice that there are two or more substances on the left side of the equation, two or more reactants, and they are combining to form one single product. And another example, two different substances on the left side of the equation, reactants, combine to form one product.
product. Thus, if you see two or more reactants on the left side of the equation and only one product on the right side of the equation, it is a combination reaction. The second type of reaction I'll show you is decomposition reactions, which are essentially the opposite to a certain degree of composition reactions. In decomposition reactions, one substance is converted into two or more simpler substances. So, in contrast with combination reactions, what we see here in a decomposition reaction is we see only one substance on the left side of the equation, that is only one reactant, and two or more substances on the right side of the equation. The conversion of water into hydrogen and oxygen gases is an example of a decomposition reaction. Here's another example. Sodium chloride solid, a reactant, can be separated into its individual components, sodium solid metal and chlorine gas. Because, once again, there's only one substance on the left-hand side, the reactant side of the equation, and there are two or more on the right-hand side, the product side of the equation, this is a decomposition reaction. Because what's happening is the reactant is decomposing into forming two or more products. The third type of reaction I'll teach you is combustion reactions. A combustion reaction is a very rapid chemical reaction in which a hydrocarbon, which has this generic formula, or an alcohol, which has this type of formula, reacts with oxygen to make CO2 and H2O. Here is an example. This molecule right here, which is an alcohol called ethanol, can combine with oxygen in a combustion reaction to form CO2 and H2O. Once again, you can note that the coefficients between each of the reactants and products are 1, 3, 2, and 3, respectively. You'll note that we do not write the number 1 when it's a coefficient. It's just implied. Here's another example. This molecule right here can combine in a 2 to 19 ratio with oxygen gas in a combustion reaction to form CO2 and H2O. So let me ask you the question, what are some examples of combustion reactions that we see every day? Now you can think about it for a second. If you thought of burning gasoline in our cars, then you're absolutely correct. Gasoline is a hydrocarbon, primarily made of octane, which has a formula of C8H18, which when introduced with oxygen that's brought into the intake manifold, is then compressed and combusted and the energy released in that combustion reaction drives the pistons, turns the crankshaft, which in turn turns our wheels. You'll also note if you look at the tailpipes of cars that sometimes you'll see droplets of water coming out of it. Water is a product of the combustion reaction going on inside the engine. 